we're trying to, to implement a, pro a program that's going to loop through the first 10 natural numbers and print them successively. Like I said, the first thing you do is you identify the initial values. In our case, the initial values that were identified, two of them, 0 and 10. Why 0? 0 because we know that we wish to start printing natural numbers from 0. Natural numbers start from 0, right? So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 10, right? The other initial value that we wish to work with is 10. Why 10? Because 10 is the last natural number that we wish to process. So in fact, we're going to use 10 here to sort of like um, implement the required condition for us to break out of the loop. Because the goal is to process what we need to process, and then after we're done processing, we get out of the loop, right? We continue executing instructions that fall afterwards. Right, so step number two is we identify the conditions. Right, our condition is pretty simple because we know that we want to print zero, one, two, three, all the way up to 10. We know that we want to break out, break out of the loop when the natural number, the, the value of the natural number is greater than 10. Right, so you notice here that nine number 10, we've implemented our condition, this is BGT, uh, whatever is going to be in register number eight, uh, compare, it against, compare it against what is in register nine, what is in register nine is 10 here. So the first time you're executing the loop, you notice here, the value of eight is going to be zero, right? So it'll be like BGT, zero, 10. Is zero greater than 10? No, it's not. So you don't go to this exit loop, right? You're gonna continue processing these things. Yeah, right, it's the, 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 uh, it's the reason why you need a condition there. <clears throat> and then you implement your loop body, and you notice that when you're implementing your loop body, right, it's, uh, it's nothing more than you coming up with a label that's going to represent the instructions that are uh, going to be a part of that loop body, right? And then within this uh, loop body itself, you include these other items here that we'll talk about, right? Usually, it's almost always the case that the first thing that you do is you must have your condition, right? As a first statement in your loop body. So you want, before you process anything, you want to check if the condition is satisfied. If the condition is satisfied, you process. If it is not satisfied, you, you go to the label that you've specified. In this case, once this condition is false or evaluates to false, we're gonna go to exit, right? Um, so condition and then you, you perform whatever processing needs to be done. In this case, our processing is pretty simple really. What are we doing? We are printing the first 10 natural numbers. And natural numbers are nothing more than integers. So because we are printing integers, every time we are processing an item, that is in that range, zero up to 10 here, we're saying we're going to print it because it's an integer, we print that integer, right? And what we're printing is what is in eight, right? Uh, so we print what is in eight, and in this case, we just had a, a, a bit of additional processing because we, we were also, um, we wanted to ele elegantly print the, the, the numbers. You know how by default, if we were to print the numbers by just using line 12 up to 14, you'd have uh, a situation where you'd, you'd end up printing uh, one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But, but there is, the reason we came up with 16, the reason we have 16 and six, line 16 all the way up to 18 here is we wish to print them in, in, a, in a more readable manner like so, right? Um, and so we have like a, a courage return string in, uh, kind of specified somewhere up there, which we print immediately after the integer, which is represented by string one here. So it's just kind of processing, right? We'll walk through the code if you wish to. And then more importantly, right? You must modify the initial value so that you process the next item in the list. In this case, modifying it is just as simple as figuring out or coming up with an instruction that is going to enable you process the next natural number. We know that the next natural number is one value more than the previous, right? So when you're processing zero, the next natural number is one. The next natural number after that is two, three, four. So you notice that all you're doing uh, is modifying the, the initial value in such a way as add one to what's in register eight. So initially you have zero, once you add one to zero, you'll be working with one. Once you add one to one, you'll be working with two. Once you add one to two, you'll be working with three. All the way up to when you get to a stage where uh, after processing 10, you add one to 10, you will have 11. Observe, 
when you when you have you come here you have 11 you say b loop you come here bgt is 11 greater than 10 the answer is yes at which point you exit you go here and then you have converged you exit the loop right um i don't know if this is making sense um, so I deliberately included step number four here as part of the bullet points because uh, I guess trying to exemplify what happens here. Uh, so modifying the values is quite easy. Uh, I have, I think, about three examples here to showcase how you go about modifying the values, right? Um, to ensure that you continue iterating and then eventually converge. What would happen if we didn't have, if we don't modify the values here? <clears throat> Do you notice what would happen? Yes. Yeah, that, and that's the thing, right? It's, it's like you, you get into an infinite loop, right? So you, uh, look at this. If we did not have line number 20 here, the CPU executes this instruction. So the uh, register eight has zero, register nine has 10. You get into this loop, right? You come here, you check, BGT, is zero greater than 10? Of course it's not. So what you do, you print, uh, you, you, you tell the, the, the you tell, MIPS, uh, or QT spin in this case, so you want to print an integer. Which integer? The integer in eight. At this point, the value in eight is zero, right? So you print zero, right? You print the carriage return. Um, and then because this is not there, you come here, the CPU um, executes this instruction and realizes, oh, this guy wants to branch to loop. And where is loop? It's here. What you're doing is you're moving back to loop here. You come here, BGT, eight is still zero. Is zero greater than 10? Well, it's not, it's gonna execute this again. It comes here. So it to be like in an infinite, we continue doing this over and over again. This is what we mean by saying you must ensure that you converge, right? You process them in such a way that you eventually get out of this loop. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so the jump and link, that would be like a procedure. Yeah, yeah that, that, would, that would be something to do. In fact, our discussion um, of procedures is immediately after this. So that's, that's another, another way of doing this. So you, you just implement like a procedure that would do a printing for you. Is that what you're suggesting, right? Yeah, that's another way of implementing. Yes, sir. That's a good question, right? So he's, he's saying, why, why do we have uh, this statement, right? Uh, like, why do we have eight and so? If we replace this with a, a zero here, think about this for a second. If this was zero, the value of eight will always be, please tell, tell us, yes. So you still be, you'll be like in an infinite loop still. It will still be one. In fact, the only difference between the, the canceling it out and including a dollar sign zero here is that uh, you probably get, get to print uh, zero first and then one, 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 one. It never stops, right? And usually when you go in an infinite loop and you probably discover this next year, by the way, when you get into an infinite loop, Eventually, you run out of resources, right? Because the CPU is just continuously executing that thing over and over again. And the only way to, to overcome this is maybe you fire up task manager and then just um, end the program or just do a, a, a hard reset or something, just reboot the machine. Which is why you need to think about this. So we are doing this because we are interested in incrementing the value in eight. It has to increase somehow. Okay. Yes, sir. So how does it print on the console? Does it just print at once like all the same numbers? Or maybe? Walk through the code. I have the complete code. I'll show you how it works just now. I was just explaining this. But it, so the implementation, the current implementation prints uh, them one line at a time. Yeah. Uh, because we are printing the, the new line character here, uh, backslash n. Right? Okay. And then repeating the body here, you notice is as easy as just uh, saying, uh, go back to this label, right? Loop. 
right? Just loop. This is how we are repeating the body. Repeating the execution of these instructions is just saying, as the last statement in the loop body, branch to the label of the loop itself. So it's like, go back to the label loop. Once you execute this, go back to the label loop. Once you execute it, go back, right? You're repeating. And then just summing it.